Hey guys, how you doing? Hope you're well. It's Alessio, and today we're joined here today by my good friend, uh, property investor and entrepreneur Paul Elliott of StrategicRebel.com. And Paul and I in this video are going to talk about uh, essentially about potentially the next recession and how the next recession might be a great opportunity for potentially investing in property in real estate. And uh, before I bring Paul in, guys, I want to before I introduce you to Paul properly, as you've probably seen from our previous videos. I've mentioned that many cities around the world are in a bubble, or they have been in a bubble until recently. Uh, London has been in a bubble, same with many cities around the world, uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, uh, Munich, and many parts of the world, as you can see here from this research from UB, uh, UBS. And I also mentioned to you previously that the London market, the London property market is in a massive bubble. I mentioned to you that the property market, the real estate market is the mother of all bubbles, and the bubble could potentially burst very soon. Some of those bubbles have already burst. Uh, I think the London property market has already burst to some extent. But also you will notice from this chart that in the year, the previous recession we had from 2007-2009, the property market in London, the real estate market dropped by 17%. Now we'll, we'll discuss with Paul what that potentially means for the next recession. So we had a 17% drop in London in the last recession, but also take a look at this chart uh, for the US. In America, we had also property markets, real estate markets drop by significant percentage. For example, as this red line shows to you, uh, the real estate market in Los Angeles in California dropped by almost 47%. I think about 43, 47%. In Tampa, in Florida, dropped by 50% almost. And many cities in America, in fact, in the last recession, dropped by similar percentages, again, about 30 to uh, 50% in the last recession from 2007 to 2009. Okay, so now we've discussed that. And before I bring Paul in, what I want to ask is from Paul is this question. Why is it that the media and most people in general think a recession is a terrible thing? Because as I'm sure many of you said to me, and many of you already agree with this, you know, we need property prices, real estate prices to become cheaper to make it more affordable for everyone to buy. Because property prices, a lot of people in London, in the UK, and also in America priced out of the market, they're priced out. So we know that a recession could potentially produce a major opportunity, a potential opportunity for buyers. And yet the media and most people are thinking the exact opposite. As soon as property markets go up, as soon as whenever prices are going up, like when the stock market and property prices are going upwards, everyone's in love with the market, right? Everyone's in love with the, uh, the property market and the stock market. Oh, we love you, the market. I can't do the sarcastic voice very well, but I know the man who can. Market all, all appease the great market. We love you so. Uh, and the fact is when the markets keep dropping, when the markets suddenly plunge and crash, everyone is afraid. Oh, the markets are falling. We should all be afraid. The market, yes, the market. So the bottom line is, I want to ask Paul, Paul, what is, what is the reason behind that? Why is it that so many people find it hard to be thinking like professionals, professional investors, uh, being a contrarian, doing the opposite of the herd, be afraid when others are greedy uh, and be greedy when others are fearful? What is the reason behind that? Um, I think fundamentally it's just being human. I, I think in the sense of how we, like, we're wired to pay more attention to bad news than to good news. Because yeah. something which is potentially bad potentially threatens our survival. So in evolutionary terms, we're wired to pay attention to anything that could threaten our survival. And I think in today's environment, we're still we're still hardcore wired that way. So we look at something dropping, and obviously, well, the news channels by themselves, they only sell bad news anyway, because nobody turns up if you just sell good news. So they want to <laughs> sell bad news anyway to get attention and get and get obviously people watching. But the other, but I think it really is that it's like oh my god something's dropping it's all going to hell in a handbasket. So everybody looks at it that way, and of course that can then cause uh, self fulfilling where more people try and get out of something, and then all of a sudden you've got a glut of property on the market in a certain area where you've got more sellers than there are buyers for that period. And if the bad news continues to spread, then the people who may have bought may then be put off because they're concerned about their own survival financially so people look at it in those terms i think purely because of that evolutionary wiring i think that's at the core of it but the ability to kind of step back from that and recognize that the front part of your brain the more rational part you can put aside those emotions and look and go oh, hold on a minute where's the opportunity in this because there's always an opportunity that that never changes no matter what's going on there's always an opportunity you know, like when, when I was originally at school, the internet didn't exist. When the internet came along, all of a sudden it's like, where's the opportunity in this? Where's it going? And that ability to kind of 
look at that and ask yourself that question cause you to think differently and cause you to ask a series of new questions which then hopefully get you in a position where you start recognizing you know what i can do something with this i can benefit from this financially and obviously once you're taking care of yourself then you're in a better position to take care of other people as well so yeah and paul yeah. do you remember back in 2009 uh, i think it was late 2008 beginning of 2009 and 2010 property prices were so cheap in london uh, mm -hmm. me and you were you know i remember we we're talking to people uh, we were doing webinars, seminars, and we were saying to people, man, this is a great opportunity. Property prices are so, I remember you were saying it before yeah. I was doing it, and you were saying this is an opportunity. Uh, again, 2009, 2010, property prices were so cheap. Man, if, if only we could go back in a time machine. I think anyone yeah, who's watching yeah, this video yeah. would agree with this. If only we could For go sure. back in a time machine yeah. back to 2009 prices, man, yeah, yeah. that would be so great. But let me ask you this then. So most people were, were not listening to us back at the, back at the time. Yeah. Everyone now is suddenly more or less greedy now trying to buy. But right now, a lot of the indicators, like the yield curve becoming inverted, uh, many economic factors are showing we could be heading for a recession potentially in the next yeah. few years, maybe yeah. in the next maybe 12 to 18 months. Do you think we need to be careful then about what, what decisions we make in the next 12 to 18 months? If a recession is potentially going to happen, which seems to be the case, a lot, of, a lot of the economic indications seem to be pointing that way towards the recession. Do you think we need to be careful? And do you think, therefore, we need to put it this way? If you, you, as a professional investor, would you be waiting for the recession to start or finish before you consider potentially you know, um, buying more properties or investing in properties? Yeah, yeah um, I wouldn't look at it. First of all, I would say don't think in generalizations. So don't think of property as being one, one ubiquitous thing that, does, that doesn't vary by area or even by sub area of a city, for example. And then if you look at it in terms of where's the opportunity, so that it, you then come down to what is your strategy. And if you understand your strategy, and your strategy is answering the question, how will you make money from this? Like how will you make a profit? And when will you make money from this? Yeah. So then of course you, you can then be decide when do I need money? Do I want the money within the next month? Am I happy to put something in and see a return and see my money work for me over the next 10 years and see a return each year and maybe get all of my money back out of that investment within the next five years? So these are questions you want to ask. But it's it really looking at it in terms of if there's a recession coming, then yes, that will have an influence on some of my decisions today. But at the same time, and when I say it has an influence on my decisions, it just means I'm running the numbers. And I'm saying, if I buy a property at this price today, and in the next couple of years, it drops by 10, 15, 20%, what impact does that have on me? What impact does that have on my yield during that time? So will I still get money coming out? Because the, the bottom line of property is people always need somewhere to live. Yeah. And whenever and you mentioned America, you know, like you said, obviously there was a big drop in Los Angeles. Why is there a big drop in, in Los Angeles? Because when people are struggling to find money to pay the rent, what do they look to do? They look to reduce their costs. And if yeah. you live in, in Los Angeles, you're going, I can be flexible and move to a cheaper state than you're going to. Does that make sense? So yeah. there's always these things to take into consideration. But look at it in terms of how am I going to make my money? When will I see my profit? and let your strategy dictate that. Yes, a recession will influence your decision. Maybe you hold off. Maybe, and one of the things we'll talk about on the, the main webinar is you know, keeping a track of all the deals that are on the table at the moment, because timing is important. And yeah. what is potentially a property that's not so great deal today, in three, six months time, might be a fantastic deal when the vendor comes back and they're willing to take less for it. Yes. Because now they're motivated, they want it, they, you know, time has a value. And people recognize that the longer a property sits on the market that they want to sell, the longer that goes on, the more motivated they become. So it might not be a great deal today, but it might be a great deal in six months. I was going to say, if there's a recession and property prices drop, then yes, no one can ever predict the, the tip of the top and when it's going to turn, and nobody can predict the bottom. So don't even try. But <laughs> yes, understand it in terms of what is your strategy. If you're looking to buy a property and sell it in a week, then yes, buying a property near a recession <coughs> and taking the risk that suddenly the value could drop by 15% within the next month might not be a smart thing to do. But unless you're, that's like day trading, isn't it? Unless, you're, <laughs> unless you've got such a short time frame, then you yeah. should be looking at it in terms of where's the opportunity in this? Yeah. You know, and it's understanding how to develop a strategy for that.
Just a quick question then. Um, my question to you is this. Do you think the next recession could produce similar drops in the property market, real estate market like we saw before? That could, they could produce ma major opportunities. Do you think it's potentially possible and probable that we could Without, see those yeah. major opportunities? Yeah, there's definitely an opportunity is going to be there. Um, but again, it comes down to um, know the areas that you're focused on. So, you know, if you're in London, obviously property prices in, I mean, London drives the rest of the country. Yeah. You know, so when, when London prices drop a couple of percent, then that drop ripples out across the whole country over the next one, two, three, four, five years. As soon as London turns again, and London actually has just shown signs of turning again, then again, that ripples over the next five years across the rest of the country and it moves out like a wave. So it starts in London, then it moves out up towards the Midlands and it moves out to the Northwest and then up to the Northeast and so on. So it always ripples, but there's always going to be opportunity there. It's just a question of understanding the numbers. Like all property comes down to numbers and negotiation. You've got to know your numbers and then it's about being able to negotiate to get the result you want. Um, in property, three key things. One is your strategy, which we've already described. Strategy is how will you make your money? When will you make your money? So that answers that question. Then we're looking at uh, the research, which really means the numbers. You've got to know your numbers and know what numbers you need in order to make your strategy work so it's profitable. And then the third part is negotiation. Okay. The biggest part of property is always the negotiation. negotiation. So knowing how to negotiate effectively. So that's what we're going to talk about on the webinar.